Uh, and with that, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. David Schiff, our Deputy Director at Naval X. We heard a little bit earlier from Sam Chubbs Gray, a recovering F-18 pilot and head of our Tech Bridges program at Naval X. Um, David helps coordinate uh, all the other stuff that, that uh, Naval X is up to from experiments down at the bottom of the forest to figuring out uh, programming and super connection elsewhere. And we're thrilled to have him for uh, 20 minutes here to talk to us about where things are headed, what we're up to and take your questions. David. Thanks, John. So uh, it's pretty appropriate, I think, that the CAW has brought us into a uh, yet another piece of the future in the Department of the Navy, which is uh, connecting online in a better and more uh, capable way. I think something the uh, Naval X team has been working hard on in the last year and change is making sure that we are not falling for any of uh, Daniel Hugendorf's uh, pitfalls he talked about earlier. I think some of those were really resonated with us. I'm sure, John, uh, you feel the same way, which is avoiding the lone hero problem. You know, we can't solve all the problems from one innovation cell. What we can do is connect and help people collaborate better. Um, I'll describe a few of the ways we are trying to do that and ways that Tech Bridges and CAW and other uh, parts of Naval X are doing that. Uh, we're actively attacking and engaging that idea of funnel, which, uh, as I know we were talking about before, it's great if you've got all these ideas coming in. And I know a lot of our syscoms, warfare centers, um, some of our shipyards even have uh, attempted things like idea scale, idea stream, iNation, some of the soup ships. I think that's been um, you know, mixed results. I love the experimentation, but I think uh, like Daniel said, uh, we wanna make sure we have the right infra infrastructure and the right experts to uh, get those ideas and concepts and problems across the department in an effective way. Um, we're also cognizant of that whole penthouse suite perception he talked about earlier, which is a top-down disconnected innovation cell. We do not want to be like that. If you guys are tracking this at all, Mohawk Matt on LinkedIn, talking with uh, folks from all sorts of parts of the Navy and Marine Corps, uh, some of our leadership and experts across the uh, DOD and outside. Um, Matt is doing a really good job of walking the walk, of talking to the workforce. Um, Captain Futcher and uh, you know, many of the other People on our team are spending the time with leadership trying to make sure they understand what we have to offer. Uh, I'm going to take us into uh, our brief real quick. Uh, I'm going to try not to use too many slides because I know that's uh, usually not desirable. Give me one sec. So um, just to illustrate a few of the things a little more readily that we are uh, working on, so uh, this is really kind of the mission of Naval X, which uh, some of you may not know about our mission, but it's to better connect the Naval network and facilitate and scale agility methods to the workforce. So I kind of touched on those things. Um, Chubbs, Commander Gray earlier was talking about uh, the tech bridge concept, which is really building physical and digital ecosystems around warfare centers and other Naval uh, locations across the country. Uh, we already have six announced across the nation and then uh, a few more coming up soon. Uh, the CAW, as I think John and Brandon and uh, Saul and a few others have touched on, is really doing what uh, Mr. Kroger talked about at noon, which is uh, trying to scale uh, innovation and scale training and uh, build that capacity, not just uh, teaching 15 people at a time, but teaching 15 people how to teach 15 more people themselves. Um, just, John, can you just clear, make sure I actually have these slides up? Boy, do you, and they're looking sharp. All right, great. I'm, I'm not going full screen because I never go full screen. Uh, never go so, full screen. Never go full screen. So uh, the network of collider spaces, interesting on this uh, COVID-19 timing on that. So it's been a challenge. We have a launch platform, which is our headquarters uh, location, and soon our tech bridges will be a space for people to collaborate in real time, in person, low barrier of entry, and uh, the tools you need at that location. While we can't do that right now, uh, what John, Brandon, and others have done already this week, uh, and what some of our partners across DOD have already done, is experimenting with digital and virtual tools so that we can reach as much of the workforce as possible. We're hoping that we can open up more avenues for people to actually reach each other during this very challenging time. Like Mr. Kroger said, this is uh, clearly a very uh, you know, serious problem that we're dealing with as a nation right now, but we cannot let it slow down the efforts we do the innovation and the way that we scale and also the way we deal with our, uh, our teams. So I think it's really important. So 
I really appreciate what uh, Centers for Adaptive Warfighting are doing, which is uh, learning and then quickly pushing that training and learning out to the workforce. Uh, I know that we've already had over a thousand Marines, sailors, and Navy civilians in uh, in the call uh, being trained, and then I know that dozens have already been training others. We've been inspired by people like Commander John Hasse, who I believe we're going to be hearing from shortly. Uh, people who have experimented with methods that are maybe outside of the Department of the Navy's uh, training pipeline, tried that training, and then saved an enormous amount of time, email, uh, increased productivity, all sorts of things. And I think, like Mr. Kroger had said earlier, uh, online education is going to be taking a bigger and bigger role in uh, the way we train and educate. And he made that distinction that training and education are different and both important. Um, I think Coursera and Khan Academy and LinkedIn Learning and university systems have shown us that you can actually do some really good work online and uh, Blackboard and some other tools uh, that we've all, I think, use in our free time uh, are the kinds of things I think Mr. Kroger wants to spread. NavalX is here to spread awareness of those tools and many others. We've been compiling lists this week that we will put out in uh, thoughtful ways of uh, ways you can uh, stay connected, ways you can do communications, collaboration uh, while you're at home, uh, ways you can entertain your kids because some of us are entertaining children uh, as much as we can during our work days, um, you know, and putting out the information that the Navy just uh, put out that Navy civilians, Marine civilians are uh, allowed to telework with children around. So. Uh, I'm going to take a pause there and ask John if there are any questions that I should address. Hey, this is this is Brandon Smart. Um, Brandon Smart. Yeah, we have a, a couple questions uh, that seems like they're getting answered. But one of them was: Is NavalX actively building a network visual, visualization or a visual database using tools like uh, Neo4 uh, of the growing connections in spaces where innovation is taking root? So for network mapping, we have uh, been experimenting with a few things on our own. Uh, that's been digitally a challenge with the, uh, the tools and networks we do have. Uh, you know, we, we do a lot of this, uh, hopefully not just in our heads, but um, a lot of it on paper, uh, trying tools online. In my free time, I created something with uh, thebrain.com on my own personal uh, computer, not on a Navy asset. and. Um, Finding different ways to do dynamic network mapping, I think will help people find uh, the solution they need more quickly. Uh, there are a lot of different things we are experimenting with. Uh, we're looking into customer relationship management tools, which will help us more quickly answer questions and connect you with the people you're looking for. And then uh, most of the folks on our team are well connected in their own rights across not only uh, aviation or uh, surface warfare, submarine warfare communities, or just uh, marine infantry, but also uh, across legal contracts, um, maintenance, sustainment, all sorts of other areas. So we're connected, I think, very well with warfare centers, uh, somewhat with shipyards, a lot with syscoms, and definitely with uh, senior leaders. So what we're trying to do is make sure that we uh, provide those uh, connections in different ways and not just going with one size fits all, like uh, send us an email or check our website, because we know that that, that works for some and not for others. We uh, admittedly have struggled to even keep up with our own inbox because it is, um, you know, we get hundreds of emails a week sometimes. So uh, anyway, the frequent misperceptions, I'll just touch on these and let Brandon hit me up with another one is, Naval X is not replacing other Navy innovation uh, or war room efforts uh, or Marine innovation or war room efforts. We're supposed to be collaborating with and supplementing those kind of efforts. We're not a buying or contracting or funding activity. So we, we cannot fund your initiatives, but we can help you find places where those initiatives will find a better home. So uh, we're also not a means to circumvent the POM process or the FAR. Uh, we're trying to make sure that you are better using those tools that are out there and using the new tools that have been authorized by Congress in the last two or three cycles. Uh, and we're definitely not competing with Softworks, AFWorks, et cetera. In fact, uh, we consider the Works Models and DIU and other organizations to be uh, friends and collaborators who we sometimes do handoffs to each other. So if something is a better fit for us, they hand it to us. In best case scenario, we do the same. Um, what we're trying to do is make sure you have access to those because what most of the people dialing in today and in general in the Don workforce have in common is that you're busy doing the important work of the Navy and Marine Corps. 
And we know that you don't have time to be at every networking event, which we don't either. And these days there aren't a whole lot. And uh, we hope to find ways to improve that virtual connection too. Brandon, if you don't mind kicking me another one, that, that would be awesome. Yeah, so I haven't followed Naval X uh, for a while on LinkedIn. Uh, they just saying they appreciate the uh, finally getting a good primer. Uh, they want to know if there's a, a scope of this message of the of the Naval X message and the context that you can get out on the platforms in which more commands and audiences will be able to uh, visualize it. Um, a lot of the times is it, it, what, they're, what they're finding is that as great and as, as broadcast as Naval X is, there's still a lot of people that have not uh, heard of it. So what's our plan in, in making the uh, branding get to a wider reach of audience? That's a great question. So uh, in addition to using our website, engagements, workshops, events, the CAW and tech bridges themselves, I know uh, Brandon, John, Tink have uh, reached over a thousand folks that way. Um, I believe LinkedIn, Facebook, and other social platforms are helping a little bit. Uh, as usual, there's <clears throat> information overload. I also know that internal networks, social media that we have inside the Navy, um, the example being Fusion, which is uh, essentially a series of wikis, we, uh, we have access to those and we are putting out some information on those as much as we can with a very small team. I think a lot of people maybe under the impression uh, this is a difference between us and EIU, for example, um, we are a team of about 12 to 15 at a time, mostly rotationals from a, around the Navy and Marine Corps and the reserves and uh, about half and half civilian to military, uh, a very small budget. And we are uh, mostly kind of a low to the ground operation. So getting the word out in other ways, uh, we would always uh, take in more suggestions on how to do that better. We uh, are doing our best with uh, <laughs> the tools that we have. We're trying not to, uh, you know, use too many things that are uh, outside of the norm so that we can make sure that we're approaching the same things the same way the workforce is. Um, as far as people visiting our space in Alexandria, Virginia, or our tech bridges, as soon as the virus uh, you know, hopefully subsides, we welcome people to come to our locations in person, come to our events. We have um, a series of uh, panel discussions, and we've had things, um, uh, actually, Matt Audette was one of our guests last year on uh, 3D printing. It was a great session. Uh, we had uh, Office of Small Business Programs and uh, Sibber and Riff come, and we al also record those events. So check our website to see an event that you may not have been able to go to in person. In fact, I'm pretty sure, Brandon and John, that you guys are also recording everything today. And this is not the only uh, call event we'll be doing online in the next few weeks. I think others are coming soon. Brandon, go ahead if you have any others. That's all we have for right now, David. Back to you. Great. Um, if, you know, I, I want to make sure I give people's time back if there are no other questions. I think uh, Chubb's really touched on the tech bridge concept, but I want to make sure people understand that um, this is really, like John said earlier, this is all powered by the workforce. So. What we're trying to do is empower you using uh, cutting edge methods, uh, digital tools as appropriate, uh, different uh, training and education that we've come across and uh, the ability to uh, scale those things and not just uh, keep those in the, uh, what you know, Daniel Hugendorf called the, uh, the penthouse. So we definitely don't want to be seen that way. We are uh, partners and we want to make sure that you get uh, your innovative ideas, not only Heard, but taken from uh, sourcing and curation all the way through program of record, if that's appropriate, or at least through a really good prototype. So if you have more questions, please contact us. Um, I'm at david.schiff at navy.mil. It's, uh, I, you know, we're all reachable through the uh, agility inbox and happy to take more questions throughout the day and obviously going forward. I think that's it for me, John. David, you can turn yourself off of the presentation there if you want. Um, right. I want to highlight for everybody who's been good enough to stick with us that uh, we have most of our panelists still here. So if there are other questions that you'd like to uh, pose to the group, you should feel free to do that. And um, we'll do our best to cue them right in here, David included, but also um, 
Saul's still sticking around, Daniel's still here, Roy and Brandon and uh, Matt Audet we still have access to. And um, we're all about that larger conversation. Uh, David, is there anything, um, I know you and I have talked a couple times over uh, our more than a year at this point together uh, yeah. about the, the journey involved in coming to Naval X from the rest of the department. And I think you know, the, the theme that has emerged from today's conversation has been all about trust, the development of it, the practice of it, the cultivation of it across a, a team, a unit, an organization. Um, and I, I wonder how you see that manifested from your approach at, at Naval X uh, across the department, across the services. Uh, I know you spent a bunch of time at NAVC. Um, and anything you'd like to recommend to the group or maybe pose to everybody about how we could be thinking about it? Yeah, I mean, I think the attitude in general, even though I think, uh, I think our first instinct as uh, naval personnel is usually security, which I think is a good instinct. I think that we should rethink whether everything we discuss should be as protected as we make it. Uh, I think that if you do not reach out with best practices and lessons learned to people who uh, you know might have done something the same type of thing and may have done it better or may have experienced something uh, and can share that information with you, within the trusted networks that we have, which I would say expand beyond the Department of the Navy to other DOD and federal partners, um, being able to share that information where it's appropriate and, you know, and security in mind uh, really makes us better as a team. And I think walking the walk on that includes attending one of our events or workshops, uh, participating in a call session, trying to uh, take your problem to the tech bridge instead of uh, just trying to keep it to your own team. Uh, I think that the ways that we are really making uh, <clears throat> huge strides forward, and I think Matt was maybe talking about this earlier, is uh, working across those boundaries within reason is really a way to accelerate faster than anything else that we can do. I think that uh, a great example that I heard from Cindy Shaver, who's our uh, DASM for procurement, was um, a few program offices having a conversation uh, at a grad school uh, one week training. And one of the programs said, hey, I tried this, it didn't work. The other program office uh, person said, hey, do you mind pushing me all that information? Uh, you know, I, I could really use that and that might help me. And while it didn't work for one major program, it worked for another. And that never would have happened without that in-person collision. And we feel like those, uh, you know, the serendipity of people meeting up, uh, while it can be magical, it is too rare and it needs to happen with more frequency and that is what we're promoting here. And I think, like you said, John, a lot of that is uh, based on trust and sometimes you have to give other organizations in your own organization some trust as well. Which actually leads nicely to our next question from Michael Lavery. Have you thought of pushing Naval X cells to the warfare centers? These are locations of innovation and some can learn a lot from your style of collaborating and networking. That's a great question. I think it is, um, exactly what the pairing of um, multiple programs inside our organization really will do. So if you create a tech bridge, uh, as we have, for example, in uh, Orlando or Newport, and then you add to that mix uh, some of John, Brandon, Tink, and the rest of the uh, CAW team's training, and you add some of our best practices from Naval X HQ or how to run an event or how to uh, do something virtual like we're doing right now, uh, that magic will happen in that location at that worker center. And a lot of the worker centers are already raising their hands and telling Chubbs, Commander Gray, hey, uh, we'd like a little of what you guys have to offer too. And we'll make sure that each of the tech bridges has uh, access to as much of those best practices and lessons learned, this network, uh, anything that we create tool-wise, and then anything that we're uh, working on. So it really is the intent. Uh, not to leave anyone in the dark or uh, leave anyone behind, but to make sure that we are bringing each other up as a community. So the rising tide model. Yeah, hundred percent. I think we're really hopeful, correct me if I'm wrong, that the tech bridges and the centers for adaptive war fighting, Chubb's point earlier was that the tech bridges are all about hardware, sort of do you have access to the things you need, the communal ingredients, both from the private sector and from academia, from our leadership in the department that that are required that are the without which not of innovation but then on top of that do you have sort of the human software to enable those connections and make it easy for people to talk to one another and figure out just how to, to do the basic steps of innovation which Colonel Lyons described so well earlier 
And operating both of those things together, I think, is, is one of our hopes that the warfare centers are going to be able to do over the not too distant future. If not this, then something else. But those, those functions need to be served, even if not by the thing that we happen to be offering, right? Exactly. And I think one of the things that's been so amazing is hearing from uh, you know, Colonel Lyons and others and uh, people at warfare centers already, we've actually picked up some of our training and uh, capabilities from them. So getting that feedback hey, from them has enabled us. Aaron, go ahead. Hot Ambient mic. noise, I think, David. Yeah. Um, I do have another question here. Do you want to talk generally about the Slack pilot and the, the direction that, that sort of collaboration software is taking across the department? Sure thing. I'll, I'll give you what I know, which is uh, we've had a few folks on our team and a few folks with res for uh, working for over a year on getting a, uh, an FOUO Slack pilot up and running. It's up and running for, um, I believe, it's about 150 folks. And that's not to be exclusive, but to be a pilot so that we can make sure that it works for us. Um, so far, so good for NavalX and Res4. Uh, others have already raised their hands and said, hey, next round, when there's, if there's uh, scope and, you know, I have funding, I'd like to join this. So, uh, we're working this out with our digital lead, Kevin Burnett, who's uh, a genius. Uh, we want to make sure that we uh, keep the ball rolling on that. And that, uh, for those who are not familiar with Slack, it's a little bit like an instant messenger where you can attach documents. Um, we keep everything uh, kind of low key on that so that we don't get in trouble with anyone about uh, FOUO and above. So uh, it's more of coordination and communication across a, a very disaggregated team. I think a lot of our, our Department of the Navy uh, network has been working very close together physically for a long time. So as things like COVID-19 affect us, I think things like Slack will help a lot. So um, will we be able to scale it to the department? Is it going to be approved at that level? I don't know. Those, those are uh, definitely above our pay grade, but um, is it a hopeful opportunity for us to demonstrate a capability that we need? Absolutely. Um, some people will say, well, I have Rocket Chat available in my approved Fusion uh, universe you know, from my Syscom, and that's true. Um, the lack of mobility is the biggest question there, especially if your team is, is doing travel to an Antex or if you're going to uh, you know, some kind of event or seminar. It's very helpful to have something mobile that you don't have to open your NMCI asset and wait, you know, minutes and minutes for it to even turn on uh, to be able to access. So uh, we are mindful of security. We're not trying to uh, break any rules. What we're trying to do is provide people with opportunities. Amen to that. And actually on that point, so Peter Clutie at uh, Keyport asks, <clears throat> he's seen a lot of fear uh, revolving around any new technology. I think it's a thing we've all encountered as we we preach the gospel. And he asks, is there a way to assuage those fears? There is, and I think it's, it's coming, which is uh, we are getting better and better memos from our leadership. This, this week has shown us uh, quick reaction memos from uh, folks in the undersecretary's office and from the datum. You know, some of our education and training folks have been pushing out great information. What I'm hopeful for is uh, in partnership with our CIO and our DASN for uh, you know, uh, what was C4I and now called IWAR, hopefully we will provide more and more guidance specifying where, when, and how you may use different tools. I know at this point, the first reaction is stay within the bounds of the NMCI and the MixIn, uh, understood that we got to focus on security first, but as we transition into a longer term period that I assume uh, could go for months, I, I'm hopeful that guidance from senior leaders that we all push, you know, we really need that guidance. We need information on what new tools, what different tools might we be able to use within left, right bounds. So understand that I can't put anything about submarine specifications anywhere on any of these commercial tools, but what about having a team call where we're just talking about, hey, you know, we're just collaborating and working on some basic things here and we'll keep everything else on an MCI or MixIn. I hope that helps. So we had another question about um, aligning with Naval X and whether that's a thing that only Ash one or Ash two uh, folks can do, or whether there's a uh, the word used was charter uh, to figure out how to make a connection and get involved. 
Uh, well, you know, the agility at Navy.mil is the first fastest way uh, using LinkedIn and Facebook and then our individual email addresses. And the answer to the beginning of the question is no, there's no limits in the Don to who can contact or work with Naval X. We are a, uh, an ASN RDA organization, but that does not mean that uh, we can only work with RDA individuals. In fact, John Brandon and uh, others have been working with operational fleets uh, individuals for, a, is it a year now? It's, uh, and and the, I think the goal in a lot of cases, that's, I think the most exciting thing we can offer is when John uh, or Brandon or Tank, one of our uh, great trainers, and I know there are a lot more on here, are training a team, ideally you bring in folks from different parts of the organization. So if you have operational Marines, I'd love to have some program office uh, folks from, uh, you know, Mark or Syscom or NAVC or NAVAIR. I'd love to have, uh, you know, NSWC Corona in the same room with uh, yeah, NUWC Keyport and Newport. Uh, those folks need to be in the same room hearing each other talk about problems from different angles. Um, even better would be to have training or events where you're meeting with industry and academic partners. And that's what the Naval X headquarters and TechBridge locations are for. And as soon as we're back up and running physically, we intend to continue that drumbeat that we have created. I might only add to that, that uh, it's, it's strange to hear people talking about asking how they can support Naval X, because I always think of the relationship as heading in the other direction, right? Absolutely. The secretary is always telling us like, don't be the people producing the thing. Go find the people who want to produce the thing and help them do that. Whatever it is, program, idea, ship. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think uh, to Alfred's question and his continuing series of excellent questions, I would guess you know, one version of an answer is let us know how we can support you. You don't need an agreement. There doesn't need to be funding for that. Send the RFI, uh, send up the balloon and we'll figure it out, right? Yeah, and we, I mean, I think John, one of the things that we learned in the last year, uh, Aaron Bug from, uh, who's at the Dib now, trained us on uh, lean startup methodologies and really understanding what your customer wants, which our customer at Naval X is the entire department. Uh, that's critical to us. So being able to get questionnaires out and finding out from big groups of people, what is it that you really need? Because, uh, you know, when I was a division officer or a department head on a, on a ship or a submarine, uh, what one sailor wanted really mattered to me. But at this point with AS and RDA being, you know, over a large piece of the Navy and Marine Corps, we want to make sure that we are hearing big groups of people's needs and not just uh, the one-offs. Now, we will hear you and try to pass you off if it's a one-off thing. Uh, sometimes those aggregate into a big problem. Uh, but we're trying to save time, save people time, increase productivity, make sure people have access to the right uh, methods, uh, industry partners, uh, academic partners, training, education, all the different things that you've heard about today. So. Uh, like you said, John, I think it's important that all of this starts with trust and we have to trust each other. I think that's one of, one of the things that uh, is the hardest one to uh, surmount at the beginning. Thousand percent. Yeah. David, thank you so much for uh, making time this afternoon. Thanks, and, John. Um, just because I don't get enough chances to say it publicly for the privilege of uh, working with you and learning from you. For the Completely semester. agree. Likewise. And uh, thanks for having me today. And I appreciate the uh, great speakers this morning. I look forward to more this afternoon. David.Schiff at Navy.Mail, everybody. Thanks. Man himself. Thank you, David. Thanks a lot, John.